With the rise of communism, Russia also saw a surge in thefts and organized crimes. During the early 1900s, when politicians were trying to make communism the normal thing, the citizens of the Soviet Union were simply trying to survive. Imagine being a person living in the Soviet Union and not being able to get bread for your family. What would you do? Stealing was the only option left for such people. From those stealing incidents began the era of the Russian Mafia. In this video, let's talk about the economics of the Russian Mafia and how they earn money. How did the Russian Mafia even come into being? During the 1900s, communism was introduced in Russia. However, when this whole idea failed, several famines took over the country. While rich people weren't really affected by the falling economy, the poor and middle class were the ones struggling to survive. At the time, when ordinary people realized that no one was going to put any food on their tables, all they could do was steal. Now, what happens is that people of the same profession know each other. And even if the world is looking for a thief, only the other thieves will know their place of hiding. That's how thieves would partner with other thieves. With such alliances, not one, not two, a total of seven million small gangs are said to have started working in Russia back in the day. But that's not all. While most people only know about the poor ones trying to survive and making alliances with other criminals, little did everyone know about the labor camps where people were kept forcefully and tortured every day. But what does a labor camp have to do with the Russian Mafia? These labor camps were the places where the most dangerous criminals were born. Or it'd be better to say that these labor death camps were where the actual Russian Mafia was not only born, but also organized and homogenized. With that, the whole organized crime system began, and Russia turned into the biggest Mafia state ever. Being a legitimate business helps this Mafia earn more than ever. Before the 1970s, the Russian Mafia wasn't legal, nor could they build proper businesses in the industry. However, the Russian government seemed to have a soft spot for the Russian Mafia. During the 70s, the private companies and their growth were totally ignored to the extent that the Russian Mafia was able to open up legitimate businesses and prosper over time. While Glasnost and Miguel Gorbachev's Perestroika were busy keeping the restrictions as low as possible for the small companies, well, the Mafia business had already started expanding. Not just that, they'd meet each other in broad daylight as there was no need to hide anymore. By the late 1980s, the members of the Russian Mafia were all busy meeting each other in motels and restaurants so Russia could be divided between different crime bosses. This was to take full benefit from the post-Soviet world. The endemic economic insecurity benefited the Red Mafia more than anyone in the world. Not only did they become legal, but they were also able to hire muscle former KGB agents, Soviet-era athletes, soldiers from the failed war in Afghanistan, wrestlers, and marksmen. These were all the people who had either lost their state sponsors or jobs. This act of hiring didn't only increase the power the Mafia had over Russia, but also piled up money in mob leaders' money reservoirs. And today, these same mobs have primary authority over several economic sectors of Russia. How many industrial entities are under the Russian Mafia's control? To have a significant influence on the economics of a country requires you to have the industrial entities under your control. According to Alexander Yellen, a member of the Interior Ministry's Department on Organized Crime, over 2,000 industrial entities in Russia are under the Mafia's control. He added that all the mob leaders in Russia are very active economically. They are putting their money into businesses while aiming for political power. The estimated number of Mafia groups currently operating in Russia is about 450, with an average of 12,000 members each. This is an estimate given by the government. However, another Russian crime expert says that the number is much higher than that. According to this source, Russia has around 10,000 Mafia groups with over 300,000 members. While talking about the Mafia's control on the industry in Russia, Vladimir Ovchinsky said that a very large part of the Russian economy has criminal origins, and a number of former godfathers are now locomotives of the Russian economy. 
Even the top police official of Russia has confirmed that the mafia has industries, including metal, fisheries, fuel, energy, and timber under their control. That's some serious control over a country like Russia. How does the mafia's control over industry affect Russia's economy? The Russian economy suffers from the lack of healthy competition, which is a normal practice in any other country where mobsters don't own the industry. It's almost impossible for Western companies to enter Russia and work there. Not just that, it doesn't seem like the Mafia is leaving Russia's industrial entities anytime soon either, as there are several corrupt politicians who have benefited from the Russian Mafia. In return, these mobsters are politically protected. The condition here is similar to what happens in the corruption-plagued nations of Sub-Saharan Africa. Not being able to control the industry doesn't allow the government to provide the Russian people with essential human services. As Interior Minister Nurgaliev puts it, around 10% of Russia is controlled by the Mafia, and this 10% includes Moscow, Siberia, Southern Russia, and St. Petersburg. Just so you know, all these areas are actually the wealthiest and most productive areas of Russia. Let's take a look at Vladivostok, the city of Siberia. We'll get a fair understanding of how the Mafia is the ruler in these areas. In 2004, Vladimir Nikolaev, also known as Winnie the Pooh, was elected as the mayor of Vladivostok. Well, if you're not Russian, you might not know who he was. Nikolaev is known to have relations with the Russian Mafia. And what makes him becoming the mayor more controversial is that his primary opponent somehow tripped on a hand grenade a few days before the election, right outside his office. Not just that, he's also the owner of some of the largest seafood, timber, and meat companies in eastern Russia. Anyways, for now, he's serving his time in jail, and probably won't come out ever. Many other mafia people lead governments in important areas of Russia, and influence the economy of the country. Banking and the Red Mafia This isn't all. Even the banking system in Russia is very much influenced by the Russian Mafia. According to a report, out of 1,200 banks in Russia, only 200 are actually considered legitimate, while the rest of the banks are actually criminal fronts for the Red Mafia. This is the main reason why banking in Russia is shadowy, and not to mention one of the most dangerous enterprises. In 1995, a total of 13 high-ranking bankers were killed in Moscow, and the incident was called the Russian Gold Rush. With this, we'll have to end this discussion about the Russian Mafia. Not gonna lie, we're a bit scared of them as well. Anyways, do tell us what you think about the Red Mafia in the comments below. We'll be back with some more amazing content very soon. Till next time, goodbye.